Actually, Turing machine is not just used for the language acceptor. This is the general model of computation. And Turing machine can be used for any kind of computation. So you can compute the partial function also. Like if somebody asks to compute the partial function, so when you are going to compute the partial function in the Turing machine, then whatever after computation is done and whatever left onto the tape, that is the output. In fact, when Turing machine is used for com computing the partial function, then your Turing machine will start from the initial state Q0 and you have some input and this is the input configuration and by making the sequence of moves in the Turing machine, your Turing machine is going to the hot state and what you need to see now, what is the output of the computation. So whatever left onto the tape, this is the output. So this is the final configuration. So your machine hurts and <coughs> your tape head is scanning the square zero blank symbol and immediately after the blank symbol, you have the output. So here, going to the heart state is not important. We have equally important, output is also equally important. So this is, uh, you can say that if you are designing the Turing machine for computing the partial function, then in addition to going to the halt state, you have to see what is the contents of the tape, that is the output. So after computation is over, whatever left onto the tape, that is the output. So that's what tape is also acting as the output device. So let us see one example. Say, if you want to construct a Turing machine, a TM for for computing and mod 2. So you are constructing the Turing machine for computing the partial function n mod 2. n is the integer and once you divide integer with that integer 2 then what is the remainder actually? If remainder is 1 or whether the remainder is 0. So you are computing the n mod 2. So question is that how you can how you can store the n onto the tape. So you can store n into the tape like this. You can, if you have the n as the integer, you can just write once the same number of n. If you have the five, n is equal to five, means you need to write five number of ones. If you have seven, need to write five, seven number of ones, like the things. So your tape contents is like this. You have the tape, okay, and uh, this is the situation you have like this. At the square zero, you have the blank symbol, and if you have the n is equal to seven, for example, then you can represent seven in the tape by writing seven times one. So here we have the one, okay. 1, 1, 1, okay, and then again 1, 1, 1, and everything after this is what? Blank, you have the blank. So, <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you want to identify n mod 2, and how you have represented the n onto the tape? say one times one you have written if n is equal to 13 you have to write 13 times one if n is equal to 18 18 times one n is equal to five five times one now we have this is the contents of the tape so we need to identify whether you have the even number of ones or you have the odd number of ones and if it is even number of ones then reminder is zero and if it is odd number of ones then you will get output one so how you can construct so we can construct the Turing machine like this. So see, uh, we have the initial state. This is the initial state Q0. From the initial state Q0, you just move to the input square one and means you have blank symbol, replace with blank and go to the right. Once you are at the right, 
you are at the state q1 okay whenever you are at the state q1 then you have ones here so you scan the ones and reach to the end of the in input so if one is there replace with one and go to go to the right and doing this you will reach to the last and you will have the blank symbol now once you encounter blank symbol so when you have the blank replace with blank and come back to the left so you are at the state say for example q2 you are at the q2 whenever you are at q2 then what you would need <coughs> need to do you just now verify whether the, it is the even number of ones or not so from the q3 q2 you can go to say for example q3 and see from, from q2 you are going to the q3 so your tape is here and it is one replace this with blank and come to the left so you have replaced with blank blank and come to the left once you are at q3 again come back to the state q2 and you have the one replace with blank come to the left so you have replaced with this so <clears throat> whenever you have whenever you read once you will be at the q3 whenever you are scanning this once you will be at the q2 whenever you are scanning this once you will be in q3 whenever you are scanning this you will be at q2 so <clears throat> now once you are at q2 and you are going to scan now one so whenever you are scanning one ball and going to the left once you go to the left you are at the square zero and you are at the state q3 so <clears throat> you see that for the even number of ones for the even number of ones you are at the q2 for odd number of ones you are at the q3 so once you are at the q3 so what you have if you are at the q3 and you identified that okay your head is scanning this blank symbol replace with blank go to the right and say you are at the state q4 okay so once you are at the q4 then once you are at the q4 your head is scanning the symbol blank again so what you need this blank symbol is replaced with one and okay <clears throat> one and you can go to the you are going to the left means again you are placing the tape head to the square zero and hence this is and your machine is going to halt your machine is going to halt here so <clears throat> this is since this is the art and you have the you are writing one here now for the case of even once your string is even so one you have deleted again you have one deleted you have the pair so even number of ones you have deleted and whenever you have the blank symbol here so from here actually you can say <coughs> for computing re reminder so whenever you are having the blank you are at this place q2 and from q2 you what you can do you can go to the state say i am going to the state q5 and in the state q5 what you are going to do you have the blank symbol you are replacing with blank and go to the right whenever you are at right you have the blank and right if you wish you can have the blank symbol you have the blank replace this blank with zero and come to the left so <clears throat> and you are halt so this is the situation when n is odd then you have the at the end of the computation you are having the one and your tape head is scanning the square zero your tape head is here so <clears throat> once your input is even then you have the situation like this this is the square zero you have the blank symbol and this is the square one and in the square one you have the zero and your tape head is again scanning the blank symbol so 
this is the situation if then once your turing machine hard then you see actually what is the output of the computation once you are going to compute the partial function and when turing machine hardens then you have to see the output and whatever is left that is the output so if you are computing the n mod 2 and if output is 0 this means remainder is 0 and if output is 1 this means remainder is 1 and you come to know that the given number was if it is 1 then given number is odd and if it is 0 given number is even so this is the way you can say that turing machine is going to compute the partial function and hence in this case <coughs> output is equally important as important to reach to the halt state so <coughs> that's why the turing machine is general model of computation and it can be used for computing any partial function in fact whatever you can compute as you know the church thesis so whatever we can compute or a team of person can compute or some computer can compute the turing machine can also compute so tm is not only used using we are not using tm only as a language acceptor we can use for computing any partial function okay so <clears throat> that's all